grand final two to the petite. And uh, the race number 24 starting to get formed up down at SeaWorld Cove. Yeah, in this collegiate novice, again, you're going to see a mixture of uh, fresh women, I suppose is the right word. People who have rode before uh, come out of junior programs and be rec have been recruited to uh, programs, especially the Division One programs. And a mixture mixed in with people who are in their first year of rowing, probably even in their first six months of rowing. And not only that, but we'll see in this collegiate novice race, uh, crews racing each other from both Division One programs, Division Two programs, and Division Three programs. Uh, the big difference between the three divisions being the amount of money and resources which are allocated to them by their respective universities. While we're waiting, waiting for the crews to get set up at SeaWorld Cove, I'd like to mention that we have individual race DVDs that are available in the merchandise tent. They are outstanding souvenirs of the 2011 San Diego Crew Classic, and they are available about an hour after the finish of any particular race. That's DVD races, recordings, take them home, $15 at the Merchandise tent here about an hour after each race. Down at the starting line, the wind is now shifted westerly. So there's a crosswind, which will give a big advantage to the lanes one, two, and three. In fact, we have seven crews in this particular race. This is event number 24, Women's Collegiate Novice 8, Heat A. Lane 1, University of Washington. Lane 2, Stanford University. Lane 3, Kansas State University. Lane 4, University of San Diego. Lane 5, UC Davis. Lane 6, Orange Coast College. Lane 7, UCD. Mills College. Warning. Late to start. Orange Coast. Warning. Late to start. Mills. Warning. Late to start. The starter has warned three crews for being late to the start. Mills, Orange Coast, and UC Davis. Well, we've seen a, a real shift in the wind here. Uh, most of today, so far, we've had a straight tailwind down the course, maybe south-southeast or, or, or southerly, cross, cross tail slight, uh, but fair racing conditions all the way down the course. Where the wind is swinging round. It's still coming pretty much down the course, but we're seeing the wind swing round past Sea World, and it's now coming from south-southwest. Uh, and it's picking up. So we could still see some very fast times here. Uh, the key is going to be whether or not the crews can be really quick on their catches, lock hold of the water very quickly. Washington, Stanford, Kansas State, USD, The starter UCD, is pulling the crews. Orange Coast. Liner's flag is up. Mills. Attention. The red flag is up. Go. And we have a start. Event number 24, Women's Collegiate Novice 8, Heat A. Oh. 
All boats away with that incident. Huskies, University of Washington, your leader in lane one. Second position goes to lane two, Stanford. Then the Wildcats from Kansas State University in that third spot. Fourth position, UC San Diego. Then quite a battle for fifth between UC Davis and Orange Coast College. Mills College, the Cyclone, battling for that fifth position. Now establishing a lead, it's Washington in lane one. Followed by Kansas State University in lane three in that second spot. As Stanford University has fallen off the pace a little bit. But approaching the 500 meter mark is University of Washington by one boat length over Kansas State, who is four seats up on UC San Diego, excuse me, University of San Diego, who is pretty much even with Stanford. After that, we have Univer University of California Davis, then Orange Coast College, and Mills College. That's the call at 500 meters. I'll be returning the microphone over to Mike Staley for the next race. Thank you, Jim. Great Thank job you. this afternoon or this morning, and we'll look forward to hearing from you later. Right. In lane number one, the University of Washington on the lead. In lane two, Stanford University with the early lead has given that up to lane three, Kansas State University. It is USD in lane number four. In lane five, UC Davis. In lane number six, Orange Coast College. And in lane number seven, Mills College. Again, as I said earlier, we're seeing a mix of uh, crews here. Some of them are chock-a-block full of uh, junior rowers recruited to their university division one programs. That's what you're seeing in lane number one, the University of Washington, lane number two, Stanford University, and to a certain extent, lane number four, University of San Diego. Kansas State University in number three have traditionally recruited athletes from other sports to learn rowing at the, uni at the University of, uh, in Manhattan. And the rest of the crews, University of California, Davis, Orange Coast College, and Mills College. We just have had a crossover there as you were looking down, and uh, apparently we've had a, a stoppage down there. I can't quite see uh, the two crews that are involved. That would be, uh, our, that would be Orange lane. Coast, and it would be University of California, Davis. So both crews brought to a shuddering stop. They're still stopped. Uh, the Orange Coast uh, Coxon has their hand in the air, or had their hand in the air. They're trying to get going again, and we'll wait and see what's happening. It doesn't look as though the umpires have decided to stop the race. Uh, both crews are getting going again, and we'll wait and see what transpires from that. Certainly that's the sort of incident that one sees on the water that could be subject to protest by one of the crews at the end. Not really sure who caused the problem there. Didn't get a real perspective on that. Uh, but usually the crew that will be found to be at fault will be the one that didn't hold their lane. Well, it appeared that Orange Coast College dropped down onto the University of California, Davis. But I'm certain that Davis was on the outer edge of their lane and whether they crossed over or not is a little bit hard to tell from this situation. Yes, we're seeing it again on the uh, scoreboard as we uh, as we speak, and uh, that was a bad clash. I mean, you can see the crews there, but they're trying to carry on, but they're both so completely in the way of each other and interlocked that neither can make any forward progress. Well, certainly an unfortunate situation, but uh, with a novice group, I'm sure that they'll learn from this situation and move forward. University of Washington back to the race as a whole on the front edge of it. Uh, they have the lead and have had it pretty much throughout. Uh, Kansas State has moved into that second position as now Stanford is having a little bit of trouble. 
with their lane adjustment as they bore out to the outer part of their lane. Uh, then to the outside, the University of San Diego. As we, as we see the wind start to swing round more towards the southwest, what happens on this course is that you can almost see the stern of the boat swing round uh, from the right to the left as we look down the race course as the wind hits their stern and uh, just catches it and it acts a little bit like a sail, makes life testing for the coxswains. Still on the lead, the University of Washington, Kansas State on the outside of them, and in between the two crews would be Stanford in that third position. Then out to the outside to the University of San Diego. University of California Davis is in lane number five and trailing, but they were the ones that encountered the problem with Orange Coast College. Orange Coast College is out there in lane number six and on the far outside it's Mills College. So after the striking, it looks like uh, Davis got the worst end of that and Orange Coast College riding themselves and moving along. Yes, after the clash, certainly seems as though Orange Coast recovered better from it than UC Davis. This is the University of Washington on the lead. The Huskies moving smoothly and have had the lead throughout. Looks like uh, Stanford and Kansas State are beginning to make a wrestle of it as Stanford has closed down to that second position. So Stanford caught up with Kansas State after having an early lead as the two of them drive towards the finish line in fighting it out for second spot. Washington, number one, will watch Stanford and Kansas State as they battle it out for that second spot. It looks like Stanford eclipsed them and got back into the second position over Kansas State. This is the University of San Diego finishing in fourth position with Orange Coast College followed by UC Davis and Mills College going stroke for stroke as Davis is gamely trying to get up into that sixth position and getting past Mills. We'll try to get a word on who bore into who as uh, it will probably make little or no difference because the two of them will go into that third echelon and uh, they did not interfere with any of the grand final or petite final combatants. So once again, unofficially, University of Washington one, Stanford two, Kansas State three, University of San Diego, followed by Orange Coast College, University of California Davis, and Mills College. Yes, where that could be relevant, Alan, is this, that uh, uh, there is a third level final and crews five and six would go to that third level final. If Davis were impeded by Orange Coast, just for example, and but were beaten by Mills, then they uh, then they would not qualify, potentially not qualify for that final, and could have a legitimate grievance. But if the other, on the other hand, if they were the ones at fault in the clash, then they would not. That's why we're sitting up there, and we have officials so uh, so well done on the race course, and we'll try to get that information to you as soon as possible. We're about ready to start for the second part of this women's collegiate, uh, collegiate novice B on the race course and getting ready to go for race number 25, the second of three in this category. And uh, we'll go down to the Cove at SeaWorld. Here we have event 25, the women's collegiate B, lane one, Washington State University. University of Southern California, lane two. Lane 